Beautiful creatives. I actually had planned on taking another week off from YouTube. Um, I wasn't going to do a video this week, but I got a gift in the mail. And this was such a sweet thing that somebody did uh, for me. They contacted me on Instagram and wanted to pick out this a gift from this specific company. So I opened the package, but when I saw how neatly everything was wrapped, I thought, oh, I have to do like a little art haul video on this and unbox it for you guys. And then I started thinking, well, there was a couple of other things that, I, that have I've gotten over um, the last few months, actually. One is a giant box of craziness. Oh my God, and it's so heavy that I absolutely 100% did not order and actually really didn't even want. And I've been so stressed about <laughs> what this company sent me and how to deal with it and everything that I didn't even make a video. I mean, I didn't even open the box up yet. So I'm gonna open that box up today because it is items that I will use. Um, it's just crazy quantity that they sent me. So, and it wasn't what I asked for. It was, it was a customer service thing and it wasn't what I asked for. And then a couple of other silly little things. So I think I'll flip the camera around and um, show you these recent things that I got. I just want to give a shout out to you guys um, that you your supportive comments lately have meant the world to Dawn and I. And I know people say that and those words sound so hollow in response to what we actually feel in our hearts from the support that you've given us. I just, feel, and I know other YouTubers say this too, but I feel like I have the most real, true, down to earth, empathetic, loving YouTube viewers. Um, and you tell me how much you appreciate how real and honest that my channel is and you um, help me get rid of fears that it's that my channel is not as glitzy and glammy and shiny as some of the other channels. And you really tell me that you're getting sick of that kind of video content and you're you're steering more towards YouTube uh, creators who are creating more real content. Like, you know, when life stinks, they say life stinks. And I am gravitating towards that too. I'm finding I'm unsubscribing from people who just exist on art halls and glitzy, glammy stuff. And I'm really being more drawn to the more subdued, um, sort of natural, honest YouTube channels. And at some point, I'm going to make a list of them and um, talk about some of them in a video because there are some really good ones out there who are just honest, down-to-earth people sharing their true life experiences as artists and creators. And I think that's so important in this day of, you know, polishing everything up for social media. So... Thank you. That's a long way around. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that Don and I are really grateful for you guys. And um, you're what keep me coming back. I am burnout. You know, YouTube creator burnout is real. And I, with everything else going on in our life, I am feeling um, the YouTube burnout. So you guys are what keep me coming back. And also a, a huge thank you for to the my patron subscribers because you are helping us so much right now financially. I, I can't even put into words how much your support, your Patreon support means to us. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Big kiss from both Don and I to you guys. Okay, so let me swish this all to the side and start with this gift one because I'm so excited about this. So this is from Bean Paints. And I really didn't know much about them. I had heard um, it's it's Bean Paints and they're in Canada. And I hadn't, you know, I really hadn't heard that much about them. I'd seen little things. So there's all kinds of cute little packages in here. This gift is from Emily Garcia. Um, 
and she's such a sweetheart. She reached out to me when I was having a particularly rough day and told me about a little bit about this company and said that she and her partner would really love to bless me with some of the product um, from this company. And like I said, I didn't know that much about them. So, okay, I need to just block off the, the code that's on here with my finger because it wasn't, I don't have permission to share it with my uh, viewers. But the little insert that was in the package says, thank you for supporting indigenous family businesses. The paints you have just purchased are made with local Manitoulin wildcrafted tree sap, hand gathered, washed and sifted. Manitoulin stone, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that right, and the finest pigments. We strive to be plastic free, a plastic free company. And we make all our packaging either hand cut and sanded reclaimed white cedar and birch or wrappers hand printed and shop with plant-based inks and waxed with local beeswax. And then they leave their, uh, they have their Instagram, which is Instagram at Beam, B-E-A-M, Paints. And then they have a website, which is www.beampaints.com. So I will try to remember to put that, uh, those links below my video. So this is what they, this is what I got. I got this really pretty sticker that I will put on one of my um, sketchbooks. And then I got, isn't that so cute? It's like waxed cloth. I'm gonna save that one. I'll open the little one first. So they, they're a plastic free company. This is probably cellophane, which is made from cellulose fiber. Cellulose, I don't know, I forget, but it's not plastic. You can tell by the sound of it, the crinkly sound of it. Okay, so, love all these little stickers. They're so pretty. This is, oh, there's two things in here. Okay, so this is the Northern Lights palette. Wintry white, beach sand, dreamer's gold, shell, wet grizzly, and glacial rivers. Oh, look at those colors. Oh, I hope the colors are coming out good. Oh, those are so pretty. Let's see, what was wintry night? <gasps> Beach sand, dreamer's gold. Shell. So these are all iridescence. This is an iridescent too. Wet grizzly. <laughs> That's funny. That's a gorgeous color. What is that? Glacial Rivers. Wow. So that's that one. And then this dot card is the Mixing Six. Cherry Magenta, Strawberry Red, Fall Poplar Yellow, Almost Night, Great Ocean, and Limestone White. Oh, isn't that interesting? These are put on in a different way. Looks like you actually get a lot more paint with these. Oh, I can't wait to swatch these out. Okay, so that's those two. And then, what's this? Blueberry, oh, this is a free sample. Blueberry Mountain. Oh, wow, look at this. It's like in waxed, lit, waxed uh, canvas. Little, the container is like a little waxed canvas folded up into a, like a pan. Oh, it's so adorable. Wow. What is, that's Blueberry Mountain. These are light, fast, professional handmade watercolors. Okay. So that's that one. Okay. And then, oh, this one. I don't even want to open it. It's so pretty. It's another more waxed, um, canvas. I guess I could just slip this off. It's like opening a little present, you guys. Oh, it looks like it's hand um, block printed. Oh, oh, wow. More pods. So this is, it has like the native name, which out of respect, I'm not even going to try to pronounce those. I'm sure I would butcher it, but the English name is Turtle Belly. 
and that's a red. This is such a pretty little gift. Wow, this just makes me feel really special. This is, it's just so pretty. It's such a perfect little gift. Okay, and this one is, again, I'm not going to try to pronounce that name. It looks like it's boreal green. It looks like a pretty green, too. I gotta think of something to use this little wax cloth for because this is so pretty. See the printing on it? Oh, it's, oh, it's their logo, Bean Paints, printed on it. This is so nice. Okay, we're, let's see, I did the red, the Blueberry Mountain, this is cub brown. So another brown, cub brown. And this is wild salmon. Isn't that interesting? That looks like gold. It says on the sheet here, ethical, this is ethical mica. And it shows it as being very pink. Isn't it interesting? It's hard to see that that's going to come out pink. Can't wait to swatch them. Okay, so I'm gonna set these aside for now, but then I'm really hoping I'll have time at the end of the video to swatch these. And oh my gosh, thank you so much, Emily. And thank your partner for me. Um, they're not inexpensive, but the story behind them is incredibly inspiring. And from what people have said, they're really fantastic paints. So. I'm going to set these aside for now, and then we'll play with those in a little bit. All this really great environmentally friendly packaging, too, is super nice. Okay, the other thing is like a 2 or $3 box of crayons that I ordered for myself. And um, boo on me for not listening to the reviews that I got because all, all the reviews said they're packing them in these envelopes and the boxes are coming smashed. The crayons have spilled out and they're broken. Yep, that's what happened. The box was smashed. Luckily, mine were not smashed as bad as some of the others. The tips broke off on a bunch of them and some of them are broken, but... Um, I don't know why with so many bad reviews, this company doesn't just, the company that's shipping these, I mean, it said it came from Amazon, and um, I thought Amazon was pretty responsive about things like that, but if you order them, I'll put a link below, but if you order them, you might just want to go to, if you're, if you're able to get out and go shopping, you might just want to go to a local store and purchase a box of crayons and support a local store, since I'm not getting out at the moment. You know, I'm kind of stuck with Amazon and Blick and places like that. Okay, so this is my box of crayons for the wax resist paintings that I've been doing. And I've been having a lot of fun with them. But the crayons that I'm using are so old and some of them are water soluble and they kind of are breaking down a little bit. So I wanted to try it with new wax, non-water soluble um, crayons. And I've posted a couple of demos on my Patreon. If you are interested in learning more about that, I'll even grab my, oh, I think I have my sketchbook here. I have one of them. I have some wax resist paintings in a couple of different sketchbooks at this point, but um, this was wax resist in her robe. These birds were wax resist. So just just drawing the lines with the wax and then painting over them with watercolor. And this is a, the wax resist demo. It's a little bit more complex the way I use the wax in this uh, demo, but this is up on Patreon. This was another one where I used wax resist and I used different, um, I used crayons, china markers. I used different products in this to get the effect and I really love this. Um, yeah, so there's always a Patreon link below my videos, uh, if you'd like to go check that out. And my Patreon is currently, you currently have all access at $5, um, which is, you know, less than a cup of coffee a month, and it's such a great support to Don and I at this time, so that might be something you want to go check out. So someone quite a while ago had sent me, um, a gift card to Amazon. 
on my Amazon wish list. I think you can send gift cards through that. And I hadn't used it. I just wasn't sure. I wanted to save it for something special. They chose to remain anonymous, so I can't share their name with you. But thank you. Thank you for that uh, gift. Because what it purchased for me was Natural History, the ultimate visual guide to everything on Earth. This, this, and it's Smithsonian. I don't, I'm reading it because I don't know if the text is showing up, but it's the Smithsonian Natural uh, History, the ultimate guide, visual guide to everything. I found out about this book on Emma Carlyle's Patreon. It was Shivam who has his, he has his own Patreon. And um, I'm going to put his Instagram handle below the video. And I will also put his Patreon link below the video to, uh, so you can go check him out. He, he has a great drawing style. He's very loose. It's a very loose, expressive, dynamic, contemporary drawing style, his work. So this is thanks to Shivam. Um, this book is incredible, guys. Look at these images. I mean, this could take like a whole hour to go through. So maybe I'll just grab the back and flip through, but it's a great pose. Don had a monkey. He had a pet monkey named Cindy when he was growing up and she was the love of his life. His whole childhood, he had her. She used to ride on his shoulders. The birds, oh yeah, the birds are fabulous. Oh, I think we're gonna have to do some bird paintings, guys. Look, but look at these bird pictures. But, oh, beautiful, beautiful images. Fit. Look at the fish. How fun would these be to paint? The, oh, yeah. I got to do some fish paintings. These are gorgeous. Wow. Oh, I love the colors in that one. The orange and the purple. Insects. Remember, uh, not that long ago, I did Peggy Kroll Roberts' Birds and Bugs. This book would have come in so handy for the bug reference photos. Yeah, that would have been fun. Maybe that's what we should do. Maybe we should make a, um, on Patreon, maybe we should make a zine out of some pictures, reference pictures from this book. Anyways, I just thought I'd share that with you. This is a really nice gift. Um, I'm really grateful for that. Heavy, very heavy book. Very thick. Super thick. So thank you, Siobhan, for um, introducing me to that book. And I'll push aside my beautiful little beam paints. This is so pretty. I'm such a girly girl with things like this. I really love this. these little packages and this just makes my heart happy. This really makes my heart happy. All right, now for the crazy, crazy box. It stressed me out so much for so long, I didn't even open it. I don't even know if I want to get into the whole story about it, but I'll put the link to the video up in the corner. Hopefully I remember. I should be writing down notes on everything I'm telling you I'm going to share, but I had ordered some Montana markers from Blick. And I contacted customer service and they were great. They were just really great. And they, um, they had the old nibs on them, the nibs that leak from the Montana markers. So they sent, they told me to return them, which is a little pain. Those of you that live rurally and don't get out know what a pain that can be. So I returned them and they sent me the same thing back. The same thing. I think only only a couple of the items that they replaced had the had the newer nibs which the customer service manager I had spoken to a manager promised me that she was going to send the new nibs and she never bothered to contact me or to check ahead of time to see if they were available we um contacted tried to contact the supervisor again 
to ask her if we could just get the nibs. You know, I've got the pens. Instead of all this sending stuff back, I'll buy the nibs. I'll pay for them. Just find out. Well, she stopped answering me. No matter how many times I texted asking to speak to that supervisor, she wouldn't respond. So she she gave my information to the United, the U.S. rep for Montana. I guess they're in Germany. And so he was going back and forth between them and Germany. And I said, all I want is the nibs, the replacement nibs. And um, he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's fine. We can do that. We can do that. Well, it took months. This whole thing took months. So all I wanted was the nibs to replace in the pens that I paid for. So a few nibs, just a few nibs. This is what he sent me. And like I said, I was so stressed over it. I never even really opened it. I just was like, okay, so these, most of these have the old nibs. This is a ton of product. And some of it does have the new nibs, but most of it has the old nibs. All I asked for was the new nibs for the number of pens that I had originally purchased. This is what they sent me for the new nibs that don't leak six and then they sent me all this product and it's kind of like what the heck all i wanted was the nibs they sent me nowhere near enough nibs to replace the nibs in my original order and then these are empty pens these are smaller pens i think what they sent me is their full line of markers. Let me let me dump this stuff out so we can get the box out of here. So I just want to say, before anybody gets mad at me in the comments for seeming ungrateful, it's not really that I'm ungrateful. It's that all I wanted was replacement nibs for the pens that I already had to make them work better and leak less. Um, I was willing to pay for those replacement nibs. You know, this is a lot of stuff. I mean, I have started playing around more with markers, but uh, <laughs> this is a lot of stuff, you guys. So what I need to do is go through and figure out which of these are duplicates compared to the ones that I have, and then sort them so I can figure out which ones have the good nibs. Yeah, so these look like these are all the good nibs. It's hard to tell, but I, I'll do that in the background um, to figure out which have the new improved nibs. Oh, and then when I did, after I got this box, I contacted Tucker again and um, the rep from the company. I said, I'm gonna do the final follow-up video on my prior video, and I would like to end this on a good note because I love the paint in these. Every time I do a video on this, people say, well, why don't you use Posca or Liquitex? I don't like the paint. I don't like the shiny paint in those. I love, love, love the flat paint in these. So I said, can I just buy? I'll buy them. Can I just buy? He, he never responded to me. It's like, I don't know, something about it. These people don't want to respond to me. So, and I asked him, can he give me any information? Because I wanted to, you know, leave on a leave it on a good note on this follow-up video. But, um, you know, are the nibs available? Any information that he could give me. He won't respond to my emails anymore. So that's say la vie, I guess. He also sent me paint. I mean, in, in in one sense, it's an incredibly generous gesture. And if I was a person that did all my artwork with markers, I would probably be like dancing in the streets. But if, they're, if half of them are going to leak as badly as the other ones did, yeah, I, I'm not meaning at all to seem ungrateful. Yeah, I'm sure I'll use these and play with them and things will be fine. The sad part about the whole thing is I just have no information for you guys at all on the nib situation. If you haven't seen my other video, these nibs are more like the Liquitex nibs. They're cut, they're chiseled. And that's very much like 
They're chiseled this way and that way and flat here. And the way that they fit into the marker, it's just a much better fit and they don't leak. Let me grab a Liquitex. So this is the Liquitex. And I do show this in more detail in the other video I did, but it's chiseled, chiseled, and flat. And these don't, these don't really leak. I haven't had a problem with these leaking into the cap, as you can tell. This is the old kind of nib. And they're rounded. They're more rounded on the top. And they're a different color. The whole top is just round. And they fit looser for some reason. These nibs leak really bad. These newer nibs do not leak. You can just see that they're completely different. This is almost an exact replica of the Liquitex nibs. So that's great. The ones that I got here, um, you know, they're the new nibs and that's, that's wonderful. <laughs> and I got a ton of the old leaky nibs too. Okay, anyways, I sometimes I just get so stressed about things I just can't even deal with it. But there will probably be some marker videos coming up. It's funny because if it was like gouache paint or something that I use, that I blow through really fast, I would probably be less, um, I don't know if anxious the right word about it. I, I just, overwhelmed. There you go. That's a better word. I just was too overwhelmed to get this out, to, to burp every single marker and um, prime them and... Yeah, it's a lot. And it'll be fun to mix some colors. I'm looking forward to that because, you know, I have repeatedly said I love this paint. It's flat. The paint in these markers is flat and it's dreamy to work over. Okay, so I don't know how long this video has gotten to be, but I can't end it without swatching these gorgeous little paints. So let me put them in here so that I can spritz them. Before I wrote all this out, I took my brush and um, just tapped into each of these a little bit of water. All right, let's go. Boreal green. We don't know how long these need to... Oh, wow, looks like not long. Ooh. Oh, really good. Nice and granulating. Wow. Oh, wow. I hope you can see that granulation. I'll do it after I do the um, swatching. I'll do a close up of these so you can see. Oh, wow. That is granulating so beautifully. Okay, the next one is Turtle Belly. Hey, turtle belly. Ooh. Oh my gosh, I absolutely love that color. Wow. Both of these colors are gorgeous. Okay, the next one I'm really curious about, that wild salmon, because it looks like it's a metallic gold to me. But on the paper that came in the thing, it looks pink. I'll be darned, it's pink. <gasps> That's crazy. Wow, it turns pink. I mean, you know, cameras are weird. I don't know what color this is going to look like to you, but in here, it looks like gold. It does not look like it has red in it. That is wild. Oh, golly, that's a pretty color. Wow. That is so gorgeous. Okay, Cub Brown. I thought because they were natural pigments that they would be harder to wet. And, you know, browns and earth tones are always drier. Um... But they're actually, oh, look how rich. They're actually not hard to re-wet. I mean, like I said, I put a drop on there and let it sit for a little bit. And um, it's fine. 
Ooh, I like that color when it's reduced down. It's almost got like a purplish hue to it. These are all, if you're a fan of granulating colors, these are gorgeous. It looks like maybe the red didn't granulate as much, but the green, super gorgeous, super gorgeous granulation. And it looks like this is going to granulate. And then the this last one in the little uh, wax cloth was Blueberry Mountain. Oh, did I, did I not write Blueberry Mountain down? Huh, I guess I missed that one. So I'll just stick it in there. I'll stick it up here. I gotta have room to write under it. Ooh, purple. Really rich, rich purple. Oh, stunning. Oh my God, you guys, it's stunning. It's blueberry. You know, when you get blueberry juice, when you go blueberry picking and you get blueberry juice all over you. Oh my gosh, it's totally blueberry. Wow. And this isn't even like watercolor paper. This is just really cheap drawing paper. I can't wait to see these on um, really nice watercolor paper. These are so much fun. These are different. These are really different. So now we're going to go to the Northern Lights card, which is this one. I have pre-wet them a little bit. So the first one should be Wintry Night. Doing this right, Wintry Night. Oh, ooh, 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 it's got like all different colors in it, like the Northern Lights. As you're painting it on, you can see all different colors. Oh, I love these. Wow. These are gorgeous. All right, the next one is Beach Sand. Emily, you might have got me in trouble here. You might have started an addiction. Hmm, this is a pretty gold color. This one's much more transparent. You could actually probably mix this with other ones to give them a warm iridescence. I hope that's showing up on the uh, camera. Sorry for my squeaky chair. Okay, and the next one is Dreamer's Gold. Okay, so this is like a lighter gold and this is like a darker gold. Look at the flakes, the mica. It's like, uh, I just don't know if it's going to come across, but it's like star shimmer, you know? Like when you think of stars shimmering water or stars or moonlight, I don't know. It's got such a gorgeous shimmer. Okay, the next one is Shell. Another one that's very light, just like a silver very light silver. Don't know if that's going to show on the camera. Very subtle, these uh, metallic ones. But you know, if you painted that white on, oh, on dark paper. Ooh, that's what I should try to do. Just grab some of my black paper and uh, see how that looks. Okay, and then this one is Wet Grizzly. In case you ever wondered what a wet grizzly bear looks like. That is what a wet grizzly looks like. It's actually a great name for that color. You can imagine what it would look like. I love it when you lay them down. There's like all these different colors in them that come together to make the final color. And then the last one is Glacial Rivers.
These are very soft, very subtle colors on this card. Except for that winter night. That winter night is more heavily pigmented, but these are very soft. Definitely want to try them on dark paper. This video is probably going to be really long. I don't seem capable of making a short video. Okay, now, this is the Mixing Six card, as this one's called. So there's Cherry, Magenta, Strawberry Red, Whoa, that's a deep red. Fall Poplar Yellow. That's a nice color. You can just tell that would be a great mixing yellow. Okay, and then Almost Night. Ooh, that is like my favorite blue. I've been using that kind of blue in a lot of my paintings lately. Wow, oh, I still love this wild salmon color that is. Beautiful. Okay, and then the next one is Great Ocean. Reminds me of ultramarine blue. Kind of ran out of room down here. And then the last one is probably not going to show up, but we'll go for it anyways. Limestone. White. All right, these are gorgeous. I hope you can see some of that granulation in there. Look at that salmon shimmer. This, I don't know if you can see the shimmer in the wintry night too. So gorgeous. This is so gorgeous. It's like blue with gold mica in it. Oh, this is a gorgeous color too. Wet Grizzly, it's got a lot of gold, gold in it. And this color, really beautiful shimmery color. And then these are non-shimmery and not very, um, the mixing set is not not terribly um, granulating, except uh, ultramarine blue you expect to be granulating. Gorgeous colors. I'm gonna have fun, it's gonna be fun to see how these mix because they do sell a mixing set in these little cube sizes. Um, but I'm gonna grab a piece of uh, dark paper and just try some of those light ones out on dark paper. Okay, this is my little Soho black brick. <coughs> this is also in my Amazon favorites shop. But because I think this video is probably already way, way, way too long, let's just try some of the lighter colors. Let's see how they do on the black. Ooh, that's pretty. Wow. Ooh, on the black, that's gorgeous. I love how it's separating. It's gonna be interesting to see how that dries. Let's try this white. Silver, actually, it looks more silver on the black.
It's just wild how it moves. I don't know if that's showing. It like, the, the pigment dances. When you drop it into the water, it just sparkles and dances. Ooh, can you see that? That is so awesome. Okay, and then this one, yeah, this is wet grizzly. Wow. Sparkle, sparkle. And this one is Glacial Rivers. Oh, did I not clean my brush good enough? Or maybe it comes out that way. Let's try this again. Oh, it does come out that way. I'll be darned, that's wild. That is wild because on the white, it looks blue. And on the black, it looks gold. The, the black must kill the blue in it. Isn't that interesting? The mica overtakes it. Wow. Super sparkly. Okay, so that's that one. Is there any of the other ones that I want to try that were really light? Um, how about the salmon? The salmon blows my mind because when it's dry, it just looks gold. And when it's wet, it looks pink. And now on the black paper, it looks orange. Look at those sparkles. Isn't that wild? Let me let this dry and then show it to you. Okay, there it is on the black. Wow. I mean, it doesn't get much more spark. I love this blue silver color. Interesting again that that blue, the glacial blue, Glacial Rivers, which is this one here, comes out only gold on the black. The blue doesn't come through. Still pretty. This one actually looks more like the Glacial Rivers. So that's on the black. Let's see if I can get the granulation without blurring you guys out. Love, love, love that granulation. Turtle belly, that's such a fun color. Wild salmon, definitely a favorite for sure. Cub brown. Oh, and blueberry mountain. And wintry night with those gold. I'm trying to get you close without blurring you with those gold flakes in it. And then the beach sand, dreamer's gold, shell, wet grizzly. It's looking, the wet grizzly is looking more gold through my camera there. It probably shows better there. It's more, it's a, a gold brown though. It's definitely got brown tones to it. And then the mixing six, cherry magenta, strawberry red, fall poplar, almost night, and great ocean. Okay, guys, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Kind of a crazy art supply haul or whatever you want to call it. Un un it's unexpected, um, but fun. These were really fun, and I will link the company below that makes these paints. Yeah, the swatching was fun. I really enjoyed that. I think the book is going to be filled with lots of fun um, explorations, experimentating with drawing, experimentating. Well, I experiment with drawing and especially in my art nest, that will be fun to sit in the evening and draw some of these things. But thank you so much, Emily, for these gorgeous, gorgeous watercolors. Thank you, mystery person for the gift card that I bought the book with. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I look forward to talking to you in the comments.
And, oh, we need a secret word. Well, okay, let's do our secret word for this video will be wet grizzly. That's just, I love it, wet grizzly. So if you're still watching at this point, write wet grizzly in the comments below the video. I can't wait to try mixing some colors with this mixing set. Maybe I'll have to save that for a future video. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you have a great creative week, and I will see you either next week or the week after. Take care. Bye.